In this lesson, I'll show you how to calculate the period of oscillation of a spring. The question reads, a 0.8 kilogram mass hangs from a spring. When an additional 0.2 kilogram mass is added, the spring elongates another 3.0 centimeters. What is the period of oscillation of the spring? In order for us to find the period, we need to use the following formula, where P is equal to two pi over omega, which represents the angular frequency. The angular frequency is found by taking the square root of k over m, k being the spring constant, which we don't have, and m being the mass. If we could somehow find k, the spring constant, then we can find the angular frequency, which we can then place back into this formula and find out the period. So it makes sense to start by looking for the value of k, and for that we'll be using Hooke's law, which is shown underneath here. Taking a look at Hooke's law, the minus sign in f is equal to negative kx is there by convention. We think of f in this formula as the restoring force. So this part's important. When the spring is compressed, a positive force is required to extend it. And when it is extended, a negative force is required to shorten it or to restore it to its natural length. If that's hard to understand, let me show you a quick illustration. So if we have a mass and it is connected to a coil or a spring, right now it is compressed. So the force would be positive. If that spring were extended beyond its natural length, the force would be negative. So let's put this all together. Let's begin by finding out K using this formula where I have force. And remember force is a measure of mass times acceleration. And the acceleration here is 9.8 meters per second squared, acceleration due to gravity. We have a mass of 0 0.20 kilograms. That was the additional mass that was applied. And the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. Right now, our spring and mass is in this state. So the force should be negative. And that's equal to negative k and x is 0 0.03, which is this value made into meters. So by using this convention of placing a negative, it prevents us from ever getting a k value that is negative because the constant cannot be negative. And also another thing to keep in mind is that a displacement where it is extended is positive and a displacement where it is compressed, as in this case, would be negative. This is why I made 0 0.03 positive. Okay, now we'll divide both sides by negative 0 0.03 meters. And what this will do is it will cancel out this negative and that negative, this unit with that unit, and this number with that number. This will cancel out with that. And let's go ahead and use our calculator. Negative 0 0.20 times 9.8 divided by negative 0 0.03, we get 65.3 repeating, 65 decimal 3, 3, 3. I don't want to round too early. I'll just keep those decimal places for now. And the units are kilograms per second squared. Now that's interesting because usually the units for the spring constant are in newtons per meter. So what we can do to make it into newtons per meter is we can use a simple algebraic trick by multiplying the top and the bottom of this number by meters per meter. Then we will get kilograms, meters, and seconds squared together, which makes a newton. And that meter at the bottom there makes it per meter. Okay, so it's 65.3333 newtons per meter moving forward. I'll take this value and plug it into there, into that formula. So I have the angular frequency is equal to the square root of 65.3 repeating over the mass of the original mass being 0 0.80 kilograms. So that's newtons per meter and that's kilograms. And the units for angular frequency are in seconds. So I don't need to do an analysis of the units here. 65.333, as many threes as you want, divided by 0.8. And we get roughly 
9.036, and that is in seconds. Lastly, we'll take this value and put it into this formula, where I have period is equal to 2 pi over 9.036 seconds. And technically, it's 2 pi radians, but we don't write radians. So 2 times pi divided by the answer that we just got previously, and that's 0 0.69527. And rounded to two significant figures, we'll just write down 0 0.70. Period is equal to 0 0.70 per second, per one second. And so there you have it. That is how to calculate the period of oscillation of a spring.